uh, what seller tools you have within your IQ office. So if you do have a question, please let me know. I want to make sure that you're getting good answers. Uh, Y'all should be able to see my screen now as well. So if you can just type a Y in that chat box, then I know that you can also see my screen. I know that we had a little bit of a blurry issue. So if it's blurry, let me know um, at any time during this if for some reason something's blurry or you can't see it or you need to see it again. All right, Kim, let me see if I can um, do this again and if it will be less blurry. Application. Let's see. More blurry or less blurry? Hmm. I wonder why it's doing it that way today. You know, if technology, I've done a couple of these today, and if technology worked all the time, we would all be very sad. So it looks like that's as good as I'm going to be able to get it, but we're going to jump right in. I don't want to waste too much of your time trying to get all technology glitches. Uh, oh, good. Better. Awesome. So we're going to go through what tools you have for your sellers within IQ Office. And a lot of this is, um, or some of this is, what tools you have to take to your listing appointment with you. Because, you know, essentially we all do the same thing, right? We all uh, help people find homes. We all uh, do CMAs and list homes and market homes. We do it a little bit differently. But if Faye and I are up against each other in a listing appointment, what it's really going to come down to is our marketing tactics, our negotiation skills, because we're essentially going to come up with the same pricing for the home if we're both doing our job well. So. What tools do you have that you at your fingertips that you can bring to the table at your listing appointment? And the first thing that you have is um, the ability to add a seller portal. So um, you can actually go in and add a contact. And if they are a, a seller, you can set them up with a portal. And I think oftentimes we only think about that portal as a buyer tool. But today what we're going to go through is how do we actually go in? We're going to add a contact. We're going to attach them to a listing. What does that look like in their portal? How do you use it? So um, we're going to go into our customer relations and leads, and we're going to actually add that record. So we're going to go in. We're going to add a new person. And then we're going to go in and we're going to create a portal. It's active. We don't want to copy the users. We want them to send daily. And we're going to click Save. Once I add that person into the system, we're going to be able to go in and you get a listings tab at the top of the page. So I can actually go into that listings tab, I can click add a listing, and I can say, okay, I need to actually attach this to um, this listing to the seller. I can now see that there is going to be an email that goes out, and I'm gonna say, okay, um, first we're gonna send that welcome email, it's sent, and then I'm going to say, we're good to go. So I now can go in. I can say that I've got that seller. And now what's going to happen is when I go into my listing, I can actually see that listing. Here it is. Um, here's the list price. Here's everything about it. And if I actually go in and edit that listing. I can see here that the seller is attached. Where this becomes the best tool is underneath this reports tab. So underneath the reports tab for your seller, you can actually set up emails to go out to them either weekly, biweekly, or monthly. So I can say, okay, you know, hey, Margaret, um, I'm really excited that you're interviewing me for listing your house. Um, I came up with a price point. You know, I think the range for your home is going to be between about $230,000 and $255,000 at the high, high range. You know, do you have a price that you were thinking you wanted to get for your house? Where do you want to list it? She says, you know, 
I was interviewing Wanda. She came up with the same price range. So, you know, what I really need to do is I need to know how you're different. And I'm going to say, I'm glad that you asked. Margaret, what I'm going to do is for you as a seller, I'm going to set up a seller portal. That means you're going to be able to log in. You can browse what's on the MLS. You can see everything that's happening. But you're also going to be able to see your portal um, profile views and how business is getting referred to your home online. Because we all know that by going in and listing your home with a brokerage, it's important to have a good line online presence, but you're going to be able to log in at any time and see what people have seen from, about your listing, where people are coming from, how often they're seeing it. And it's going to be a really, really cool thing. So to do that, first thing I'm going to do is set the price range parameters. So I'm going to say, hey, anything between 240 and 260 is the competition. I'm going to say, hey, it needs to have a minimum of 2,500 square feet. And it's going to be in this zip code. These zip codes pull from your MLS. I can also say, or I want it to be on this community. And these communities are going to pull from your MLS. I'm in a demo account, so I don't know that this is actually going to pull any community names. So I can actually go in and then I got impatient. I can actually go in and say, okay, uh, for those reports, so we're going to go community names and we're going to select those community names. I can check one or multiple. So if you know you have a community that maybe you've got three golf course communities that are really comparable, you can actually go in and choose those three communities. So I can say, okay, Royal Highlands. I can say Whisperer Condominiums in Kensington Park and click OK. So I've got three selected. If you want to do it by a map, you can actually scroll into your location on a map. You also could do it by a building name. So if there's a specific building name that you needed to add, you could actually say, OK, I need to use this building name. And that, again, depends on what your MLS is exporting. On the right hand side is where I can go in and I can actually say I want to show the listing details. I want to include the showing activity report. So if your office is using this as um, for setting up the showings, you can say I want to include the showing report. If your office is not using this for showings, do not include that. I want to include the web activity. I want to do a competition report and I want the referral reports. Referrals are how visitors are arriving at the listing. Then I choose. I want this to send every two weeks or every four weeks or every one week, which is really nice because when I'm promising to Margaret at our listing appointment that she's going to get a once a week email and a portal that she can log into at any time and see these statistics, I don't have to do this twice. I don't have to log in and set it up twice. I can just set it once and forget it. I can set it up and it's going to go out every week forever. If I want to preview this, I just click the view button at the top and it's going to actually view the report. Again, keep in mind that I'm in a demo account so that doesn't show up. I'll pull up a couple sample reports for you here quickly. Um, question on how did you get to the portal screen um, for the client? We actually, Sam, we were in customer relations, my contacts and leads, and then about halfway down the page on that client, there is a My Portal section. So within your listings, you can go in and you can set up those reports. It becomes a really big tool because your sellers want to know how people are getting to their listing. They want to know what's actually happening with everything and how it's all working. Yeah, no problem. So let's look at one of these. Let me just pull up an example report for you here real quick. I'm going to pull it up and then I'm going to move it over to your side of your screen.
So this is processing, it's pulling the report. I can actually see here, so here's the listing, here's all the information, here's the overview. How many people have found it from Facebook? How many people are going directly to the listing website? How many people are finding it on the company page? How many people are finding it on, these are all, so there's, um, Facebook has a couple different things, mobile Facebook, desktop Facebook, um, iPad, agent site searches, here's the referrals for the four weeks, here's the referrals for the entire time of the listing, all the web activity shows here, how that listing showed in the search results for the last 30 days, and how many time the listing details have been viewed on the website in the last four weeks. It will also go through and say, okay, here are things that are listed that are within your competition in the last four weeks. In the last one week, there have been two new listings, eight price changes, and two went under contract. This is an incredible tool for your sellers and for your communication with your sellers. And again, where you're finding it is underneath your listings and then going in and setting up those seller reports. I would be talking about this at every listing appointment I was going to because I do believe that having this kind of a report about what that referral looks like, what the web activity is happening, because it used to be, shoot, five years ago, people wanted to know how many websites their listing was on, right? They wanted to know, hey, is it on, is, is it on 800 different websites? And the answer is, Yes, but it doesn't matter how many websites it's on if nobody's looking at your listing. And so being able to communicate and clearly get this information to your sellers is priceless. Are there any questions on that seller report tab about how to set anything anything up? Anything like that before we go on to the next section? Wanda, Kim, Faye, Bon, Sam, any questions? You can. So if you click this view button, so in the up, if you click view, you can actually preview that. I do want to just give you a word of caution. Um, if you set this up at three o'clock in the morning, that's when this report is going to set itself up. So it does make sense that you are conscious of the time that you set up your seller reports, because if I set them up at three o'clock in the morning, they're always going to set at three o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to make sure that I'm setting these during normal business hours. Uh, Jane, I need a little bit more information about can you include in events that reflect this, those numbers? I don't understand that question. No, but that's a really good idea. I'm writing that idea, idea down. It does. So Laura brings up a really good question. So she just went in and tried to set up a seller. So um, I'm going to go in and let's say that uh, Kelsey wasn't the seller and I'm going to actually need to add, I'm going to add Laura Kelly. And she's not in there. I start typing Laura and she doesn't come up. So I can actually add a seller here and I'm going to add and you're going to create a username and password for your seller. This is so they can also log into their portal and access that information at any time. So I'm going to say, hey, Laura's username is uh, Laura Kelly, and her password is um, Kelsey Real Estate 2019. And when I click Save, that seller is now added to my contacts. and that listing report are saved. So then your seller gets a notification that they can log in anytime to your website to see that information. 
Does that make sense, Laura? And everybody else, does that make sense as well? Yeah, no problem. So the other thing that I want to just include while we're on this details page, there's a couple things that I want to include while we're in the listing. The first is attachments. So if you have a file that you need to be public, you want the plot map to be public, you want the CCNRs to be public, or you want that PCR to be public, that's up to you. Then I'm going to say, okay, I need to upload a file, and you can actually attach a file to that listing. And it will be shown on the listing website. Again, that's underneath attachments. Um, Sam, so hang tight. So Sam, you asked, are there two logins to set them up with? No. If you've already set them up as a contact first with a portal, you do not have to do that second step. If you have not added them as a contact and you add them underneath the, the reports here, you have to add that login information there. There's two places where you can do the same thing. So I can do that. You also can access your open houses underneath here. So you can go in and you can schedule your open houses. You can add all the dates that you would like um, in. I suggest adding as many dates as you know that you're going to hold open um, in at one time. Buyers are searching all the time for open houses and what's happening and what's going on. Um, I can then see my open houses here. Here's what's coming up. So you can do that underneath this screen. Underneath the details tab, there's a few things you need to know. One, once you've scheduled your open houses, you can actually access your open house sign-in right from this page. So you can go in, you can go to um, that sign-in page and it will open the sign-in page for you. I'm going to show you what that sign-in page looks like here in just a second. Down below, all of this information is going to be pulling from your MLS. The description pulls from MLS, the MLS remarks pull from MLS, the story is something that the seller can add in their portal. So a seller can go in and if I'm listing Jane's house and Jane has a wonderful story about how great Halloween is on her block and how there's hundreds of kids that come through and it's a really warm community feeling, she can write that story and I can choose to share it on the listing web page. I also can edit it. So if Jane says something about, and Jane would never say this, but if Jane says something about how she hates kids and they're not allowed to be in that house while she's living there, I can go in and I can edit that story. So this is going to pull. Um, when the seller puts that story in, you can, you'll can you get a notification and you can go in and edit it if you would like. Or you can go in and make it active so that it shows on your website. But you have a final approval of that before it processes for your website. The last thing we're going to talk about on this page are these images. So you can actually, all your images are going to pull from MLS. However, every MLS exports photos at a different resolution. So the photos that we get are not often high resolution photos that you all have spent money on because you're superb agents getting professional photos taken of your home. You can go in and upload your own images here. You're going to confirm that by editing the images, they're no longer going to be updated from the MLS, and we're going to add files. So I can actually go in. I can say, hey, I need to add um, these photos in. And it's going to tell me images are not downloading from the MLS. Yep, I know that. We're good to go. Here are the high resolution photos. So the MLS, Sam, is automatically going to update them from, your IQ office is automatically going to update them from MLS. 
but depending on your MLS, not all MLSs export photos at the same resolution that you uploaded them. So they might not be as high of resolution as they are, as you have on your computer. So if you wanted higher resolution photos on your websites or on your flyer, you would upload them into IQ directly. Does that answer your question? Nope, it's not gonna cause double photos. Because once you, once you upload the photos, you get that alert and it says that the images are not downloading from the MLS. So then your website is no longer going to update the photos from the MLS. That makes sense for everybody? Cool. Sam, I'm going to come back to that next question. So the next thing that I do want to talk about is going in and actually No worries, not a big deal to have all the questions. Questions are super important and I wanna come back. I just wanna make sure I'm also getting through all the content that I have to get through. So the next thing I really wanna to talk to you about is um, how to order postcards. So you can actually go in and you can order postcards to farm an area and create just listed postcards. To do that, you go into marketing and then go up to my orders. And then you'd click on that green, create an order, or on the plus order in the upper right hand corner. So let's just do that again quick so you can see it. So you can either create an order here or you can click the plus order in the upper right hand corner. When you do that, you can actually go in and choose just listed, just reduced, just sold postcards. And you can say, okay, I wanna do, I have a just listed postcard. I like this gray postcard. It's going to process. I can select the property. So I can actually just go in and check the box next to the property that I listed. It's going to insert the photos. It's going to pull the information from MLS. If I don't like it, I can go in and I can say, okay, I need to actually upload a different image. It's going to let me crop that. I will insert it. And they're ready to go. Again, anything that I hover over is editable. When I click save and continue, it's going to ask me how many I want to order. I can actually just order order them for that neighborhood. So if this is one, two, three, four, East Anton Avenue, I want to farm the 100 houses in that neighborhood. I click save and continue. <coughs> I review my order. I click through to my payment and they're ordered. Postcards take between 10, seven and 10 business days to process. You do get email proofs. Again, you can access those underneath marketing and then my orders. The next thing I do wanna talk about is creating flyers. So if you need to create flyers for an open house or um, for perhaps to be mailed. Add content here. And I'm going through this quickly because we are going to have another session on marketing here in the next couple of weeks where we're gonna dive way deeper into this. Again, I would go in, I could say, hey, I need a property flyer just listed. I like this gray one. It's gonna go ahead, it's going to let me select the property, add it in, 
And now I see it have all this information, all my information, all the listing information, all the list of listing photos pull through. If you don't like them, you can just click. You can change those images. If there are additional pro property images, you can choose from those or you can upload your own files. Any questions on how to order postcards or create flyers to either print or email? Cool. There it is. I'm just going to save this through so we can get there. Here it is. Just listed property flyer. I can save and print this. If when you click save and print, nothing happens, you need to make sure you don't have your pop-up blocker on. You'll get a little alert right here that says your pop-up has been blocked. You can save and email it. And it's, or you can simply save your flyer. Awesome. Here's that, here's the flyer. Just listed. So the last thing I want to talk to you briefly about is a listing action plan. So as we all get busier with things, um, it's, it's really nice to have our checklist of things that we need to do for a listing automatically start to happen and automatically be reminded. And you can actually create your own action plan by going into tools and preferences and then going into my action plans. When you do that, you're actually going to go up. You're going to click plus new in the upper right hand corner. You're going to add a listing plan of maybe this is just reduced. And you're going to choose that it's a listing action plan. From here, you can click save and you can add as many items as you would like to this action plan. Um, automatic system emails, follow-up requests, adding to campaign, ordering your marketing items, sharing on social media, adding the seller, show, setting up your show, seller reports. You can set up reminders for all of this. To add something, you just click on the option, name it. I want it to be due the day after the listing goes live. Do I want it to be visible to the seller in the seller portal, yes or no? And I click save. And I can continue to add items. I want it to be due three days after that, click save, until I have a complete plan. What's really nice about these is if you go up to your name in the upper right hand corner and you go down to your profile and then to your preferences tab. Again, we went to our name and then profile and then preferences. You can actually choose your default action plan. So anytime you take a new listing or anytime you have a reduction on a listing come through, you can say, hey, I need to use my just reduced action plan or I need to use my new action plan company. And now anytime something comes in from MLS, it's going to be shown. If you want to attach an action plan to an existing listing, you go back to that main listing dashboard. my listings and you can edit it and then you can go in and you can actually go to the actions tab and you can assign an action plan. And now all those things are added. It's going to tell me when they're due. Anything that is automatic, 
<coughs> so if you've scheduled an automatic email or an add to campaign, those things automatically happen. I can also go in and I can say, okay, I need to add the seller to the listing. I'm just going to complete that right from here. The seller is, I can start typing their name. I can search for them. Or I can click add the seller here and click complete. So you can actually start working all of your information here right from your checklist screen. Share on my Facebook business page, complete. It's gonna say, I wanna share my showcase page. So you really can just work your list of things from within the listing. That's a ton of information in 32 minutes. Sam asked a good question I wanna come back to and I wanna open up the floor for any questions or anything you wanna see again. So Sam asked, we could not add photos at all to MLS and just rely on IQ. You could if you wanted, I suppose. But here's the thing. Your MLS is how you all agree to play nice in the sandbox, and that's how other agents access your listings. So when you put the photos in MLS, you're showing all the agents on your board your listings. When IQ pulls your listings from MLS, it's for your you to be able to market that listing, to create flyers, to create open houses, to manage your sellers. It's your CRM. It's also linked to your front-facing website. So if you don't want to put any photos in MLS, you, you don't have to, but then you would have to manually go in and make sure that you are uploading photos for every listing. <coughs> Does that answer your question, Sam? Awesome. Other questions? There is no such thing as a silly question. This is a lot of information to take in. So if there's no other questions, here is the challenge. The challenge for you all is to um, put on your calendar a day that you're going to go in and just set up your seller reports. If you don't have any listings, you're just going to go in and you're going to set up your action plans for your listings. Um, so Debbie asks, when the listing sells, do you delete this? No, when your listing sells, it automatically updates from MLS and you don't have to worry about taking it off the site. It automatically takes care of that for you. Uh, Faye, how, what do you mean? So Faye says, how does it not create a double? Faye, I don't under, do you mean a listing that's coming from MLS? So yeah, once you up, upload the photos, so if I say, hey, I want to upload my own photos, I would go in and I would delete them. I would say, hey, I want to select all images, delete these, and upload my own. And then I'm going to add no, new files. Good question. Can you delete an action plan or do you delete an action plan? We'll answer both of them. Once you go in and you have an action plan attached to a listing, and let's say, hey, I'm going to just go in and complete all these. Here's the notes, checked on seller stories. Save. I shared this on social media. Complete. I added the realtor.com website to it. I can link that in here. I checked on my sign install. So do you see, Elaine, how it's completing all these items? If I wanted to delete the entire plan, I could just click the delete next to the action plan and it would delete it. It would still show my completed items. 
and I could go in and delete each individual. But when you're listing cells, the system automatically is updating from MLS and you do not have to go in and update the status of your listing. I know there's a couple of you on the calls and your companies are using transactions. That is a class for another time. Awesome, I'm glad that makes sense, Elaine. Uh, Wanda asked, yes, this webinar is being recorded and you will get an, an email with it. I also do wanna just quickly show you a couple things that are tools for you all as far as accessing information. So we have a Facebook page. It's called Realistic Users. I know some of you are part of it and some of you are not. Um, you can join here and we post all of our webinars here. You can ask questions. We do our best to answer in video form. We also have a YouTube channel and you can actually go into YouTube. Oop, I'm in the wrong account. And our YouTube channel is called Realistic Support. And there's a ton of information here. I'm gonna go ahead and put those links in the comment chat box so that you can access both of those things if you would like. So join our Facebook group or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Things are always posted there, Wanda. Um, let's see, Nancy, I just saw your chat. Um, there's not any way to make my screen larger. Unless you can make your screen, maybe you can, maybe you can zoom in on your screen but I don't know what your settings on your screen are. I'm sharing the whole app, app screen. You're welcome, Wanda. Other questions? We've been talking for about 40 minutes now. I'm gonna hang tight for just a couple more minutes, make sure that we do get all questions answered. Um, again, there's no such thing as a silly questions. We wanna make sure that you feel supported in how to use the software. There's a lot of information in here. Again, to get to those seller reports, we went to action and edit. And then we went into, and I changed, this got changed from me. We went into that reports tab. Perfect. Uh, awesome. If there are no other questions, I'm going to go ahead and end the webinar. There is a short evaluation at the end of this. Um, and I, we appreciate all feedback. We would love to have it. I hope you all have a great day and we'll talk to you soon.